Vitamin D is all the rage these days and lots of people are supplementing with lots of vitamin D. But is that necessarily a good thing? And does vitamin D impact heart health? That's exactly what we're going to talk about in this video. And if so, how much should you take or should you not take it at all? That's what we'll cover. In one meta-analysis, researchers found that a vitamin D level that is between 10 to 14.9 nanograms per milliliter, which is equivalent to 25 to 37.5 nanomoles per liter, um, this, this level more than doubled the risk of a heart attack compared to those who had a vitamin D level higher than 14.9 nanograms per milliliter or 37.5 nanomoles per liter. Now, vitamin D level below 10 nanograms per milliliter or 25 uh, nanomoles per liter more than triple the risk of a heart attack compared to those over 14.9 nanograms per milliliter or 37.5 nanomoles per liter. So what does that tell us? Well, some people will take that to mean that, oh, low vitamin D levels equal more heart attacks. But do, vit do low vitamin D levels cause more heart attacks or are they just correlated to more heart attacks? Well, the way to figure that out is if we think they cause more heart attacks, we supplement with vitamin D until we have normal levels of vitamin D and we see does that impact levels of heart attack. Fortunately, those studies do exist. One meta-analysis found that vitamin D supplementation does not protect against heart attacks and strokes. And another meta-analysis found the same thing. Why not? Well, it's because vitamin D is what they call an acute phase reactant. Think of it this way. Vitamin D status is kind of like the warning light on your car. When the warning light on your car comes on, what do you do? Do you fix what it's telling you to fix? Or do you take out the light? Well, supplementing with vitamin D to get your levels up to normal, in more, in more cases than not, it actually just takes out the light. It doesn't solve the problem of cardiovascular disease. It doesn't solve the problem of heart attacks and strokes. Uh, because supplementation with vitamin D increases vitamin D without decreasing strokes and without decreasing heart attacks. So a lot of people wonder, why is it that vitamin D levels are correlated to cardiovascular disease, but they are not a cause of cardiovascular disease? Because vitamin D levels are essentially an indicator marker. They are not the problem in and of itself frequently. Sometimes they are, but usually they are not. There, are more, there is more than one reason for low vitamin D levels. For example, in one study, they found that vitamin D is low when inflammation is high. So what do you do? Do you decrease inflammation by whatever way possible, or do you take vitamin D supplements and still have high inflammation? Now, another study found that vitamin D levels are low in obese people, and when these people lost weight, vitamin D increased, even though they didn't supplement with vitamin D. So again, do we give obese people vitamin D supplementation and increase vitamin D without decreasing their weight, or do we decrease their weight and simultaneously increase their vitamin D without supplementation? Of course, we do the latter. And a third study found that just being sedentary decreased vitamin D, just simply not moving. Here's what they did. In the study, the vitamin D was measured before an exercise session and after an exercise session and 24 hours later. And what they found is that the baseline levels were around 69 milli, uh, nanomoles per liter. After 30 minutes of cycling at an intensity of about 70%, uh, their, uh, their vitamin D levels increased to 89 nanomoles per liter in just a matter of 30 minutes. After 24 hours, their vitamin D levels returned to about 75 nanomoles per liter, but still not back down to baseline. So just being inactive and sedentary um, decreases vitamin D levels. So what do we do with people? Do we give them vitamin D levels and keep them sedentary, or do we get them exercising and simultaneously improve their vitamin D levels without any supplementation? Of course, we do the latter. Uh, these are just three examples. So. And there, there are also other reasons. There's a, there, there are about eight or nine other reasons why low vitamin D may not be low vitamin D. So what do we do about all this? Do we think that vitamin D is a problem in and of itself and we supplement with it regardless of why? Or do we first test to figure out do we have low vitamin D and if so, supplement? Because according to another study, high vitamin D levels are also a problem. See, the body doesn't like anything too high or too low. The body is kind of like Goldilocks. It likes, to, it likes it to be just right. Low vitamin D levels are problematic, but excessive vitamin D levels are problematic. And so let's look at vitamin D as what it is, which is a warning signal, not necessarily the problem in and of itself. I hope you found this video beneficial. My name is Igor. Click like and subscribe.